FedEx guy came today. And we've got what's probably the best bargain in e-bikes around. Well, I may have a problem here. As you can see, we have a few bicycles and we just bought a new one. Well, maybe there's a cure for this, I don't know. But I wanna show you our new bike in this video. So come on along and we're get into this. In this video, I really wanted to kind of go over this bike, maybe compare it a little bit to my Rad Mini and kind of show you some of the features and some of the things that Rad has improved on their bikes in the recent years that I think make this a, a very nice bike and a, a kind of a step up from the other bike. But I will say it's not perfect. I do think there's some faults on this bike that um, I will talk about. And then we're gonna take it for a bike ride and we can kind of get into some of the details and what it's like to ride, how the controls and everything work. And I will also show you some of the options I've put on the bike because I didn't, I added a couple of things that I thought the bike needed. Hi everybody, my name's Randy and this is Zephyr Travels and Zephyr's over here monitoring the video for me. And this is my new e-bike. Now I think this is probably the best bargain in an e-bike right now. This is the Rad Rover um, 6 Plus, and it's a step over design, not a step through. This bike retails on the Rad website for $15.99, but I bought it for $12.99, and I got an additional accessory here worth $100 for free. Now, I've been watching this bike for a while, and Rad's had a number of sales on it, and it's varied between uh, $300 to $500 off the price of the bike. They recently just had one where they sold it for $11.99, but no accessory. I bought it with the accessory for $12.99 and got the accessory as a free option. I think this is a bargain in, in e-bikes. Um, if you look at our Rad Minis over here, those retail for $16.99 currently. Um, and that's a very nice bike. It's a little smaller. It's probably much more capable for traveling than the Rad Rover 6. But there's something about having a full-size bike that I like. I always I ride those and they're, and they're great for when we take trips and such and they travel well on the truck to an extent, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But the one thing that I have to say about those is they just don't feel as solid as a full-size bike. And it's partially because the handlebars fold and you know the bikes fold in the middle, they got the smaller wheels and such. And they also kind of look, um, I don't, I don't wanna, they, they kind of look less, less capable because of the smaller wheels, even though they're the wider tires and everything. Um, I like the bikes. We've had them for, gosh, four years now. And those are our second set of Rad Minis. Diane wanted the step-through model, and so I replaced both bikes. I was able to sell the two bikes for a good price and bought two more. And that's really what brought me to this bike. I saw it, and I saw the sale price, and I thought, you know, realistically, it's such a good price on this bike that if I don't like it, I could probably turn around and sell it and not lose a lot of money on it because e-bikes are very popular right now. Now, when you get this Rad, um, uh, any Rad bike actually, it's shipped to you directly to your home. You buy direct. You, there are a few retail stores that you can go to and we had the pl pleasure of visiting one in San Diego. I didn't shoot any video on it, but I did take this bike for a test ride before I bought it. Um, but I bought it online, had it shipped here, and then you have to do assembly. And I'll show you a little bit of video of that assembly um, right now. Now that we've got some pictures of the packaging before we open it up, it's time to unbox it. And let's see here. It seems kind of anticlimactic with such a big knife. Now, Rad suggests that you take the bike out of the box without cutting the box open in case you have to ship it back. It's gonna be interesting to do this by myself because the bike weighs 70 pounds, but let's see what we can do. It's 
something to hold it up. Oh. Now what you want to do is you want to get yourself some side cutters and start taking off some of the zip ties that are holding everything together. Being careful not to damage anything on the bike. Taking the wheel off or set that aside. Oh, and just so you know, Rad does have an assembly video on their website, which I watched. So if you're wondering why I haven't pulled out the instructions and start reading through the instructions first, it's because I watched the video. Red tells you to make sure to read all these warning labels before you ride the bike. Okay, so now that we have it mostly unpackaged, take a good look at the bike. Make sure you don't see any damage from shipping, scratches or anything like that. This seems to be looking pretty good. And so now we'll start the assembly. And the first thing we're gonna do is put the front wheel on it so that we can get it up on its kickstand. And we do that right here. So you remove the front stand and what you wanna do is pull out this uh, assembly here, which is your front axle. I think there's a little more technical name for it, but this goes on the front wheel assembly. You'll notice that there are, there's a small spring, a nut assembly, a skewer or, or bolt in the cam lock, and another small spring. You wanna make sure when you reassemble this that the spring goes with the narrow side in and then the nut assembly tightens on that. Now you can carefully lift up your bike, line up the forks. Oh, here's also a piece in the brakes that need to come out. So you wanna hand tighten the nut on the right side till this lever is about halfway, and then swing it up and lock it in place. There, now we can put the kickstand down and support the bike. Our next piece is going to be the handlebars. And they are in this box. There's also two screws down here at the post that you want to just make sure those are tight. Next, we'll put the fender on. So this is a front fender. The bolt for the front fender is already on the fork. So you're gonna need the five millimeter and one of the wrenches. I think it's possibly this one. So this would be a 10 millimeter wrench. And you wanna remove this bolt. So what you have here is two washers and a bolt and a lock nut. Fender assembly just slides in from the front like this. Now you're gonna reinstall that bolt. Oh, you're also gonna put the headlight on at this point too. Here's the headlight and the mounting bracket. So that same bolt that holds the fender holds the headlight on. So you start by threading the bolt through that, up through the fender and through the fork assembly. Put your washer and your locking nut back on. Tight, tighten up so it's just snug a little bit so then you can still readjust the light. And then once you got your light in about the right position, tighten it down. Now these fender brackets, there's a five millimeter nut and bolt on that. You wanna remove that. You don't need the wrench because the bolt is captured. Once you have that removed, you wanna slide that around the fork. Do not capture the um, brake cable, actually the brake hose, because these are hydraulic brakes. There, and repeat for the other side. Nice, big, comfy seat. And here's a mark on here on the maximum height that you can set the seat at, which is probably higher than what I need. On the handlebar assembly, 
the displays are protected with packing material. Remove that. Well, now that we've got pretty much everything put together, there's just a couple little things left to do, and that is to plug in some of the wiring, starting with the display, which should energize the bike. These only go in one way, so don't force them, and you want to match the colors. Now you want to plug in the headlight. There should be a headlight plug here. So one of the biggest things you're going to notice between these two bikes, obviously, is the, the taller tires. And for me, it's they're kind of a mixed blessing. The, these taller tires are nice, but they're also heavier. And so you really notice that weight when you get riding. And I could not phantom ride in this bike without any type of assist. And I tend to ride with a lot more assist on this bike than I did with the Rad Mini. Typically on the Rad Mini, I'd set that at three and I would be comfortable riding, you know, with an assist. I find this bike, I'm at four or five and the five is a top assist. So uh, that is one of the things about this bike that um, I think, you know, because it's heavier and because it has the bigger wheels with takes more inertia, you know, your range is not going to be as good with this bike. But I didn't really buy it for range. I just bought it for riding around town, really. You know, getting out and getting some exercise with it. I don't know how much exercise I'm getting if I'm riding on five all the time. But the other aspect too, when I'm riding at five, I'm going a lot faster than I would be if, if I was riding that bike on three. And that's actually probably a good point. One of the things that between these two bikes is you ride at five, you're right at the max speed at this bike. It's set at the factory at 20 miles per hour. I went into the menu and figured out how to raise that to 25. So at five, I can ride, ride this bike anywhere between probably 23 to 25 miles per hour, depending on if I'm going up a hill or flat terrain or not. That bike is set at 20 miles an hour. And when you're riding at three, you're pretty much only getting about, I don't know, 15 miles per hour out of it. Put this on three and I'm probably doing 18 to 19. So there is a big difference. You, you tend to ride this bike, well, this bike will ride a little faster. Um, another thing about this bike that's a little bit different between this and the um, Rad Mini is the way the battery is set up. The battery actually sits into the frame and also all the electronics are built into the frame on this bike. And that's different than this bike. The electronics are fully exposed out here in a weatherproof case and the battery is set outside the frame. And that goes to tell you about one of the issues we had with both of these minis is that we carry them on the outside of our truck on the rack. And last year we had electronic issues with both bikes. Um, this bike, uh, the control module here on the dash got wet and stopped working. And on that bike, the uh, electronics got wet and it, it affected the headlights and the headlights wouldn't shut off and they'd always stay on dimly. So I ended up replacing the electronic module on that one and the control panel on that bike. A couple other things that I want to point out that are different between these two bikes. A big one is the brakes. This has hydraulic brakes and e-bikes are very heavy and that's one of the things that you want to be careful about when you buy an e-bike. This has cable control brakes, just like a bike like one of these over here. These mountain bikes are all cable controlled. That's okay, but it works better on a bike this size than a bike this size. The hydraulic brakes allows you to put more stopping power in there. And even though the brake um, rotors are the same size, this bike does stop a lot better than that bike does. So it's a safety thing. If you're considering buying an e-bike, definitely make sure it has hydraulic brakes. There's a few things different about this bike as far as how the controls are set up, and I'll go over that when we take it for a bike ride. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out that I added to this bike, which I really like, and it's something that they put on the newer bikes, it actually has a built-in lock right here. And this lock will go across the rear tire and lock the rear tire on the bike. 
It also has a capability of plugging in a chain and you can chain the bike to something using the same lock. So I like that. It's not, you know, you don't have to carry a separate lock like we do on these bikes here. Um, you know, it's kind of built in. I also added a, a second tail light and I found this on um, Amazon. And this tail light will automatically turn on when the bike's in motion and it will actually work as a brake light when it notices the bike is slowing down. So I thought that was pretty neat. And as I mentioned, the rack is an addition, but it was a free addition to this bike. But I think it just adds some utility to the bike. You can add a basket to the rack or a bag or whatever you want to it. So you can, you know, expand upon that quite a bit. And I added a mirror to the bike. I think every e-bike Actually, every bike should have some type of mirror. As you can see, all our bikes have mirrors on them, which is, uh, you know, a good safety thing to have. That concludes our review of the Rad Rover Plus 6 Plus. And I've got to tell you, I do like this bike. I think it's a lot of fun bike to ride around on and enjoy. I'm not sure about traveling with this bike, if this is going to be my go-to bike to take when we travel. Or am I going to keep the Rad Mini and use that when we travel? This might just end up being my around town bike. All right, enough talking about this bike. Let's go take it for a ride. But first, I've got to get into ride mode, so we'll do that right now. All right, let's go. All right, let's take a ride. One of the things you probably notice is there's a fair amount of noise. Some of it's from the tires and some of it's from the gears in the uh, uh, bike. So a couple of things I really like about this bike, it's the size of it. It's, it's a very stable bike. Um, and it's probably got a lot to do with the, the bigger tires on it. And the, you know, just the gyro aspect of having a large tire like that makes the bike seem very stable. The large tires are also nice so that you could ride some trails with it. Um, I don't know if I, how extensive, I don't think I'd do a mountain bike type trail with this, but you know, a hiking trail or a, a dirt road or something, this would be a very comfortable ride. And also beaches would be fun. Um, to ride on this bike. So there's a couple things that I would, you know, try with it in the future. Now, riding on the beach, I would be very careful because you can run into an issue with uh, the salt and corrosion. So you really want to make sure that after you ride on the beach, you rinse your bike off very well and probably give it a good cleaning later. One thing about this bike that, um, and it is, again, with the bigger tires, is it's, the, it has the same motor, I think, as the Rad Mini. So this bike is not as quick to get going as the Rad Mini. Um, and then again, as I've alluded to that, by using, wanting to use the throttle when we start pedaling. This bike is, you know, a little tired to get going. It's not as quick to get up to speed. It, and when you're at top speed, I think it struggles just a little bit compared to the Mini, you know, feels like it's hit the top speed and we're just running at that all day. Now it could also be because I've got the top speed on this bike raised up by five miles per hour and it's probably pushing the limit of what the motor can do. Having bought this bike, I guess the question would be, am I pleased with the purchase? I would say yes I am. A couple things that I probably, I like this bike, I'm very pleased with it, but I probably is not going to be my sole bike. I don't think so. I'm, I'm debating on whether to sell the Rad Mini or keep it for a travel bike. I think I'm leaning to keeping it as a travel bike right now. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to take this on a couple short weekends and see how it is to load and unload on the trailer, or on the, tra on the truck. And if it's something I want to use in the future, I will. This video was not sponsored by Rad. I just buy Rad bikes because I like them. I did look at some other brands and there are probably other bikes out there that are good, but I noticed that pretty much everything that was in line with this bike was about $2,000. And so I really wasn't looking to spend that much money on a bike. Um, and so this is really a lot of the reason why I bought this bike is just the cost. I think it is a bargain 
for an e-bike. But this video was not sponsored by Rad. I paid for these bikes out of my own pocket. They're, you know, they weren't sent to me or anything. And same thing with the GT bikes there. Those were bought at Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, they're just, these are just my choices in bikes and I just wanted to share that with you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We'd love to hear what type of e-bike you have. And until the next time, we'll see you down the road, guys. Take care. Seth, there's not a spot for you to ride on the bike. What are you gonna do? Hmm? You need a spot, don't you? We need to get a little wagon or something for you to ride in.